You guys have told me you love this type of video, so I had to put another one together for you. We are doing preschool and toddler busy bins. I have some new ideas for you that you're gonna wanna try out on your own. I'd also like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. You said you like the toddler and preschool busy boxes, especially when some of the things are from the dollar store. So I have put together a new video with some ideas of some things that you can try to do with your kids. So I do have a couple of previous busy bin idea videos. I wanna link those down below in the description box so you can watch that after you watch this video. Let's get started with some new ideas. First thing you're gonna need for our busy boxes are a container. Dollar Tree has a ton, you know, I've shown you a couple before in the past in previous videos. However, I have come to love one that you can find in the kitchen food storage section. This time I'm going to pick the square one. Sometimes they also come in the shoe box, rectangular ones, but I really am liking the square ones, especially for the activities I'm gonna show you today. So you need one of those, one for each activity. So I got my box here you guys if you want to label these you can label them with the days of the week or you can keep them individually which is what I like to do so each activity in each box is one box per activity I know a lot of people like to put them per day and put several activities in there but you can store it however you want you can even label the boxes on the side for days of the week or you can label them with the contents all right so for this first activity now that we have a box we're gonna head on over back to Dollar Tree we are gonna go to the party section and and in the party section, they have these little cups that look like appetizer cups or little shot glasses, and you're going to find them in either the square shape size or the cylinder size. They come six to a pack, and they're really great because they're clear and we can see in them, and they're gonna work great for this activity. You only need one package. I went ahead and bought both of them just because I was curious, so I have the ones that are little cylinders here. They're a little bit taller and skinnier, and then the square ones are are a little bit wider, but they both come with six, and I think I'm gonna use the square ones for this activity, it's just gonna work better. But you can use either one if you can't find one or the other, no problem. All right, a couple more supplies we're gonna need. This one's optional, go to the craft section and find a little tray. This little rectangular tray with the stars on it works really, really well with this activity because all of those little shot glasses fit right inside of it. So I picked one up just to have to keep it all together. Completely optional, you don't have to have it. I just thought it might be a nice little touch and I like that little star there in the end and you can reuse it for other activities too. So if you like to do tray activities, that might be a good option. A very Montessori-esque kind of thing. Then you're gonna need some pom-poms which is a purple alphabet staple we are always using pom-poms this time you're looking for the rainbow colored packages you can get them in individual colors or you can get the rainbow packages too they even have them that are half white half color so whatever you can find will probably work if you can't find them you can also find them at craft stores or online I'm gonna look for some and find them and put them down below for you in the description box just in case you can't find the rainbow ones at the Dollar Tree but you definitely need the rainbow ones I have some that I've been using for years in my little toothbrush holder canister here. This is actually from a previous activity that I showed you guys in making toddler activities from Dollar Tree. And I use this little container as kind of a fine motor exercise. It's absolutely perfect. I put that video up here in the corner so you can go back and watch it if you want to see how I used it. But anyway, I have my pom-poms in here, so I'm just, I'm not going to use the container. I'm just going to use the pom-pom. So I'm going to take all of these out. And for right now, I'm just going to put them into my container. This is how I probably store the activity inside the box for when I'm not using it. So I went ahead and opened all of these containers here and laid them out and then you're going to need to label them and mark them. You can do this a couple different ways. I have these little scraps here of vinyl that I use with my Cricut channel and so I have them all in rainbow colors and this is what I'm going to use to mark each container. If you don't have these what you can use are construction paper. You can use white paper and color them whatever color you want and glue them down to the bottom or tape them down to the bottom. I just thought this would be easier because the vinyl is already adhesive and I already had the rainbow colors and it just makes sense. So I'm going to put them on the bottom of the container. You could also put these on the side or even wrap around. That's up to you. I just think they look really pretty when they're on the bottom and it makes the most sense. So what I'm going to do is peel these off and I'm going to put one on the bottom of each container that corresponds with each color pom-pom that I have. And real quick too, if you guys haven't subscribed to the Purple Alphabet, I would love it if you were to subscribe to this channel. We do educational activities for kids, lots of ideas and 
inspirations to learn through play. We do hauls, a little bit of giveaways. We do lots of shop with me's, you guys, <laughs> lots of shop with me's because I have to show you where I find all the good stuff. So we go to Target and go to, um, sometimes we go to Walmart and we go to the dollar store, especially, which is what we're doing in this video a lot. So I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and join our purple alphabet family. Make sure to say hi if you're a new subscriber. All right, I've got all of my little things labeled here. I'm gonna just pour out all of my pom-poms and set up the activity. What's really great is that all of these containers fit right into the tray perfectly. So I'm gonna set all six of them up inside of here and the cylinder ones do too. I'm gonna to set all of the six up here inside. And then this is a simple color match activity. So you're just gonna take the pom-poms with your hands and place them in the correct cup. Very easy, very simple, and it's very colorful and engaging too. This is actually a Montessori inspired activity. And what I mean by that is in Montessori you do a lot of one-to-one -one correspondence and moving one object to another and you do color matching very simplistically so this is a very Montessori inspired activity that really works on that fine motor and hand-eye coordination while also working with color recognition and the kids are going to be very engaged with this my kids used to love doing color sorting activities and I couldn't find enough ways to do it and as you get older if you want something a little bit harder you can even replace those colors with the word label names on the containers instead of having the color makes it a little bit harder if you wanted to do it that way. Just extend it a little bit, you know? Now, if this becomes too easy, you can always add a fine motor component. I actually found a new fine motor tool over in that same section. They have these little plastic tongs. They come in clear, which are a little bit bigger, and they come in the silver. I actually wanted to get the silver because they have that little scoop on them, kind of like a spoon, and try them out. You can also find those tweezers. I've shown you many, many times before in the teacher section over at Dollar Tree. Those would work well, but I just kind of like that these had the little scoop on them and I wanted to try them out. I'm not expecting these to be wonderful, 100% the best quality, but they're going to definitely suit the purpose. So we're going to try these and this is a way to extend the activity to make it harder. So in this one, you're going to be working on fine motor skills and fine motor means those little muscles in your hand and working those tongs to pick up the pom-pom and then place it in the correct color. Now feeling this, I can definitely tell it's not the best of quality. So I have a whole video of fine motor tools. I'm going to have to put it up in that corner again up there somewhere so you can check it out and get some ideas for some really great quality fine motor tools because you definitely are going to need them if you're going to be doing lots of fine motor activities. So go and check that out because there's a lot of ideas that you could use for that too. So I'm kind of working with this now and I see that it's hard for the pom-poms to come out. Once again, it's not the best of tools, but if you're in a pinch and you're on a budget and you want something, this is definitely going to work. But if you wanted those high quality ones, definitely look at that fine motor kit video to get some more ideas. Now when I put it back in the container, what I would do is I would actually probably just stack up all these cups. So I take out all the pom poms here and stack all my cups all together. Then put all my pom-poms in my tray with my tongs, set it on top and put my lid back on. Definitely show and demonstrate your kids how to use these before they actually get to play with them and that way they have an idea of what they're supposed to do. Definitely give them a quick demonstration and that will save you a lot. Love these little containers that you can stack them and everything too. They're such a great size and can be reused. This one is actually from a previous video. Do you recognize it you guys? This was in my last preschool activity videos and it's a whole bunch of candy sprinkles. If you missed that video and want more ideas, go back and watch it. You guys gave me some good feedback on that. But I'm gonna repurpose this for this activity video and do something different with it because I like how you can recycle and reuse materials in different ways. So over in Dollar Tree, you go over to the kitchen section, buy the spices and find the jar of sprinkles. Now in my last video, I only used one, but in this video, we're gonna use a couple more and you can even use more than what I'm going to use right now. All you need to do is is dumping into the container. So like I said, this one has just one of these containers inside of there. And then I'm gonna add, I think, probably two more of these just to give it a little bit more. I think I could add more than two if I really wanted to just to make it a little bit more deeper, but two, 
or actually three in total, seems to do the trick. Then you're gonna go over to the craft section. If you haven't already gotten these, you don't need these. You could use magnetic letters if you have them, wooden block letters if you have them, but these are chipboard numbers and they're in the craft section. You get a whole set. And we're just gonna bury these into the sprinkles. Just kind of cover them up and put them inside there. And so you can do the whole set of numbers. You can do a couple of numbers, it's up to you. You're just gonna bury them underneath there, kind of shake it around and get them covered up. This this is a number hunt. So you can go in and find them and search for those numbers. And this kind of like sensory bin thing that's actually taste safe. And of course, if you have a kid, you guys, that is still oral, that is still putting things in their mouth, please supervise and use your own discretion on whether or not these activities are activities are suitable for them because you really want to make sure safety is a number one priority. Montessori inspired activities generally use a lot of small items. Just be very, very careful on that. Now you guys sometimes ask me what are sensory containers and sensory bins. So sensory can work a couple different ways. Here we have the sense of touch. And so you might have a sensory sensitive child who doesn't like to touch things. Usually it's more gooey things or rougher textures and the sensory bins are there to help desensitize them with all of those sensory things that we encounter in our world. Plus it's fun and it's play so you can work with this and let them touch the sprinkles. It's probably not going to be as threatening as you know slime or something but it's a really easy way to involve those sensory components when they're learning and playing and plus we throw in the numbers in there and we're learning about numbers too and working on calling out those numbers or finding them or pulling them out and naming, naming them. You can even match them to some flashcards if you wanted to, that would be a good idea too. Then if you wanted to, you could of course add in those tongs. And this is why I got the ones that had the little scooper on the end, because then you could scoop up the sprinkles and play with them that way and dump them back out. So it's a little bit more difficult to use these tongs. Like I said, go for those high quality ones if you're gonna have a fine motor toolkit, because you'll thank me for it. But these definitely work, not the best, but they do work. And then they have that little scooper on them so you can scoop up some sprinkles and pour them out and just have a lot of fun. And now for, some number cups. So these were also in that same section, but I also been seeing them in the graduation section. They are a set of plastic cups with lids. You can also find them in a different plastic with white tops. This one has 10, so just make sure you have 10 because we're going to be working with some numbers. You're also going to need some like a Sharpie or maybe some stickers. I have the sticker sheet that I have. Dollar Tree has number stickers too, but I didn't need them because I have these. We're just looking for the numbers so that we can label our cups. So this is going to work really well for me. Then you're going to need something to count with. You can use little erasers or even these wooden beads I thought would be fun because they are rainbow colors and you could use them in other activities. Once again, be very mindful if your kids are oral and putting things in their mouth. You don't want to play with this if they're going to do that. But I love these new wooden beads and I actually have my own beads, some little pony beads here and some really pretty jewel tone colors. So I'm gonna use these for this activity, but you can use what you have at home or you can get some of those beads from the Dollar Tree or even erasers. So let's separate all of these cups. I went ahead and labeled each lid of the cup with a number sticker. Like I said, you could use a Sharpie if you wanted to. I'm gonna set up all the cups here. You can do them in a row all the way across, which would probably be the most logical way. But for the camera here, I'm gonna set them up kind of so you could see them all set out. So the number lid is gonna go right next to the individual cup and I'm gonna put them in a numerical order. Now that we've got that set up, we can take our beads and we can demonstrate to our child how to do this. Another Montessori inspired activity where you take a bead and match it up to the number symbol. Now I'm very quick here because I'm an adult and I know how to count, but your child will take a lot more time in figuring this out and going in order. So we have the one and the one bead. We have the number symbol two and two beads and all the way through the cups until you get to the whole activity. Now I'm putting a whole bunch of beads in my hand at once and counting them in the cups, but your child is supposed to take one bead at a time using their pincer grasp, another fine motor skill, and placing it into the cup one by one by one. And so you'll have to teach them that that's how to do it and that helps prevent any errors and getting messed up. And plus it's hard when they have all those beads in their hands and they're not exactly good at using those fine motor skills. So you'll just go ahead and fill up all of the cups until you get to the end. If you have a child that this is new to, you can start with half the numbers, maybe go up to five, maybe go up 
to three and add more numbers as you go along. So this is an exercise that does take some time, especially when they're just learning. So just keep that in mind and don't get frustrated if it's taking them a little bit longer than you expected. You can also make this more difficult in using these cups for adding. So you can add two cups together and count all of the beads together to see what those two numbers equal. Same thing with subtraction. And then you can reuse these cups even later when you're doing multiplication and doing sets, right? Very cool way. Oh, and skip counting. Skip counting is a good way to do, use these later too. I want to take a second to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You guys know I like creating activities for kids that center around learning, but I also like to learn myself. Skillshare is an online learning community and they have thousands of classes to explore new skills. Lots of fun things on here. You'll find things for creativity, photography, even lifestyle classes. There's also an opportunity to dis even discover music and crafts. I tried a class out called Find Your Style, Five Exercises to Unlock Your Creative Identity by Andy J. Pisa. I like that you can find topics that are relevant for your interests. So if you're like me and are all about self-improvement, you'll love this one. Andy walks you step-by-step -step through practical exercises that you can do instantly to help your creative style. It's pretty easy to follow and it's fun to watch. It's all there in one spot. Plus there are no ads and there's always new premium classes. So it's curated learning and Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And of course, you guys, for you, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. If you want to see another preschool or toddler busy box, I'm going to put one up here on the screen so you can go right to it. Make sure you click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.